And then welcome into the Hamlet's Draft MTG. Today, we've got a set review today. So me, Matt, and Joe. Say hello, guys. Hello. Hi. <laughs> we'll be discussing M12, as it's been uh, fully spoiled now. So we'll go straight into it. Over with, Skype. The, yeah, with the white cards. Come on, boy. Good start. Right then, so the first card on the list is Aegis Angel. Aegis, Aegis, what do you think? How do you spell that? How do you say that? Uh, so yeah, this is it's quite it's quite a cool card. It will definitely be as like all the rare six-ish mana flying things are. It will be sort of a crazy bomb in limited. Um, to making something indestructible will be pretty powerful. Have a pair of these out, and then uh, that's pretty good. That's going to be very hard to deal with. Getting two of them with in limited is going to be hard to do. Well, yeah, yeah, it will. Um, but yeah, it just no, it is another target permanent. So if anybody's playing opposite to you and you pre-release and they slam this down and go, okay, well, I'll target this, and you go, whoa, back up a minute, because that's not how it is. Steady it. on, fella. Yes. <laughs> so moving, um, moving to well, the no, next. Hold on, I was going to say. Oh, it's, 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 more, more, more. Go, Joe. I was going to say, it's quite, it's quite a theme, isn't it, this whole... When it enters the battlefield, something else gets something. It seems to be a recurring theme in this yeah. set so far. Another and, uh, theme is the you, next card. Like that, like, yeah, so the next card is uh, part of a five, the five-color cycle. They're two mana, one and the color, two, one, uh, something mage. And this first one is Alabaster Mage, Human Wizard. I think they are, are they all Human Wizards? Probably. Woo! Um, and they all, have, they all have a non-tap, just a recurring payment ability that gives a signature ability of the colour. Obviously the white one uh, lifelink, vigilance type thing but they've gone with lifelink for this one. I think, that, I think that's pretty powerful. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean I'd, give, I'd always uh, pick them up as well. Oh yeah, definitely. And I think them being the, the, the range being uncommon will uh, limit the number that are running around because multiple ones of these, if you get the, uh, the different colours in, in, in your if you get a pair of them and you can blast multiples of these abilities all over the place, then I could start doing some crazy mm, things. I think, yeah. If you're, if you're doing a two-color deck, it's always worth having one of them. I think probably the white ones are probably one of the weaker ones, but it's, yeah. uh, it's still good. Once we fully explore the, uh, the whole list, then uh, we'll be able to comment further on uh, which ones are the best. So moving to next, our first Mythic Rare. Ooh! Of, uh, Number 12, lovely and orange and, and amazing. Ooh. I don't know, is this the first mythic aura? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. I think so. No, no, I'll draw, no, because you've got draw 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 draw. Draw. Uh, Yeah, probably should have been mythic, um, as it's uh, the flavour mythic type thing, I think it is. But, yeah, so this is the first mythic thing, and I think it's severely over red. I, I don't Really? You don't like it? I think it's good. I think it's definitely, definitely very good, but um, and you just have the same problem with auras that has yeah. been around mm. forever. But it's then, like, okay. with Jace's banding, it's better. But yeah, it's still going to be. I was gonna say, I, I, I like it a lot with a card that's coming up a little later on in this color, um, which we'll get. I think I know which one he's talking about. So, it must be Angel's Mercy. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, when Enchanted Creature dies... You never missed out on it. When Enchanted Creature dies, that's even... If, if you go to cast it on, uh, on, on on one of your creatures, and then they kill it in response, the Angelic Destiny just goes, so... Yeah, yeah you don't get it if that happens. That's obviously, okay. plus four, plus four flying first strike. They probably, probably I think they should have put Lifelink on it as well to completely mirror it with, uh, with Bane Slayer. But, um... What about yeah. Protector from Demons and uh, Dragons? Yeah, that's, those that's are the that's most important abilities of base players. Yeah, that's why you play. You don't play. You don't main deck it anywhere because if they're not playing demons and dragons, then it's just a waste. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a clever sideboard card, base player. You have to be a skill player. Let's move on. Let's move on. Talk Continue about, with, uh, talk about a sideboard cards. <laughs> so for, the worst thing about this for me is it costs twice as much as Whiteson's Passage, but gives you two more life. That sounds what? like a perfect trade. What is? I'm, I'm, what? I'm personally going to be buying four of these in every constructed deck I make. <laughs> it's just, it's just beyond me how ridiculous this card is and why they keep insisting on reprinting it. I don't know if they're in yeah, certain uh, contractual agreements with certain cards to keep them being reprinted. <laughs> a contractual agreement with the life gain for no reason. Yeah, yeah, just out of out of nowhere. Next, onto Arbalist Elite. Now, is this this is very similar to an old card? I think. 
um, having some archer type dude dealing damage to attacking or blocking creature, yeah. which is a a cat's twenty two of white destruction. Well, there's that harpoon slinger, isn't there? And there's a crossbow infantry as well. Yeah, so I think this, it was is, yeah, this is big damage. This is three damage. Yeah, that's no, it's not it's not, not bad. Um, think twice about uh, attacking into that. So, but untap, obviously, though. it doesn't untap during your next untap step. So, what do you do with that? Yeah, he's he's not as good as previous iterations of him. Just gotta I wait think. another turn. That's just that's just the thing for three damage. But I suppose if that three damage saves you from something, or then uh, then it's all worthwhile. Um, yeah, True. fair enough. Is one of the uh, next one of the flagship cards for uh, advertising the new reword of the word dies, which I personally hate. I like it. <laughs> I think it's good. <laughs> It will take it will take some getting used to, and I, I, yeah, yeah, dies. I suppose. I think that's how we say it. Anyway. Like, oh, I'll, I'll play this. I'll kill your guy. So maybe, maybe the word dies is a yeah. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll fit in with just how people start talking anyway. So, but I think overall this card is good. So yeah, yeah. Oh, it's four, amazing. Four four for five flying is is above the curve because I'm pretty sure five mana is a three three flyer as as on par. So. Having it four four is good, and then exile target permanent. As usually, when your creature dies or etc., then it's a bad thing. But exiling yeah. another permanent is pretty sweet. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's, it's all win. I don't like the way they just kept the artwork of this boring, very, very fair. Cool. Well, I know Matt likes this card, Armored Warhorse. Yeah, it's like a it's a white. Uh... What's it? Ness has chosen, without yeah. the without the graveyard thing ability, but you know. Yeah, no, I think I think I think it's solid. Um, playing this one too. What what do? I said it'd be good in white weenie, which I think will do pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, in a strad. You think? I think a lot of uh, two mat two drops that you see um, would would lose in combat to this guy. Um, very, very few two drops. Like, well, you have like a quarter pound, I suppose, that have got three power. Um, but yeah, have, having three toughness is uh, is pretty strong. So yeah, I'd be happy to have an armored horse, a war horse, in a wide draft. No problem with that. Oh yeah, Another... it looks solid for that as well. Also, be fairly happy to have an assault griffin. Yeah, because <laughs> if you don't try and draft blue white flyers in core set drafting, then you've probably made a mistake. Well, you you, you just win every time, and Assault Griffin is definitely one of the uh, the musts that you want. Having three damage in the air, attacking on turn five is uh, oh, yeah. it's it's pretty good. So, Auromancer. Hmm. It's, it's sneaky. Again, um, I think this may be... It goes well with the guy we just saw. Yes, I think this is what you were talking about. So standard sort of well, white. Other things, but yes, there are white. a few little themes. Yeah, uh, I think they're trying I, to make more pretty good. So we'll see. Yeah, I think they knew Jace was going to go beforehand. Just wanted to leave it to the last minute. But uh, I don't <laughs> like the artwork of this guy. It's the old school one, isn't it? I think it's not. It's not been redone. No, yeah. Very lazy with M12. That's good. It's like. Uh, they did that with M10 11, and 11, so it's yeah. all good. All good. What's next on the list? We're going out of the A's for our first B. Benelish Veteran. <laughs> um, pretty vanilla, pretty boring. Uh, I, this yeah. guy doesn't do too much for me. It's gonna, it's, it'll be okay no. if you're repeatedly attacking, attacking, attacking with him, but as soon as you leave it back, then uh, then it just it just loses a lot of a lot of value. That's why it's a common. That's why it's a common. Mm -hmm. Don't want too many of them. They're Side good. board cards you were talking about just now. <laughs> the classic. They'll be happy that this is still in there to fight off uh, probably upcoming dominant black decks. I was going to say all those black red decks that exist. <laughs> yeah. like one. No, 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 no. Upcoming, Joe. Upcoming. You have to look at the bigger that picture. Right, yeah. We're looking forward, are we? And uh, red permanence. I'm pretty sure Koth is going to be uh, a big player, and uh, Celestial Purge will happen. Happy to deal with him. So that's uh, that's always good. Same sort of thing. Celestial Purge. Nothing has changed with it. 
uh, as yeah. has not changed with the, with our next card, Day of Judgment. Still, they needed I to did. have this. Yeah, I was disappointed with this though. Disappointed with what? With Day of Judgment, I was hoping they'd do uh, Wrath of God, maybe something a bit better because it's really bottom of the barrel. So what? You know. What like what mega cards are there that have regenerate? Yeah, I know, but it's no more mana, but it's the same effect. So yeah. why not just have Wrath of God? It's annoying, to say the least. I think I think they should have because it's been in corsets now. What I suppose it only was only in M11. It wasn't in M10. No, M10 was. Nothing. Uh, it was. Oh no, they did planar cleansing in M10, which oh, uh, I think they hoped would would be uh, a good answer. But no, the six mana being triple white was uh, a little bit too much. So went back to rough ish. Fair enough. Um, Again, yeah, no, I would be the other thing, but. No mind, it's, it's good. It's got to be there, hasn't it? Yeah, you, you still need a, a board wiper. It's one of White's strengths, I suppose, isn't it? Indeed. What's next on our list? Demystify, standard. Um, love the exactly. artwork, Demystify. It's pretty cool. It's just epic. I just it's love a bit all like, the colors. It's like uh, Dalaran, if you've ever played a Warcraft cool. game. It's very much like that. <laughs> Apparently, it's it's actually... actually. There was a better quote in uh, when it was printed in Al Jurazi. It's cooler. I can't remember it though. Mm. So about City of Lights. What's next? Divine Favor. This card is uh, has a twin, which we will uh, see later in black. It's the uh, hey, for holy strength, isn't it? Yeah. Again, those cards were very boring. Uh, didn't really do too much. But again, it's another. Another aura, another new-ish aura. Mm. It's, uh, it's good. It's good. I always liked having one just for um, taking down like the phantasmal things because you know, yeah. even though you're like, oh, well, they just died to removal, but you usually only draft removal. So having like a cheap way to get rid of them can usually be nice. So it's good for being there, and it's uh, it's nice. Let's new yeah. players see the aura mechanics. So, yeah. That is what core sets are all about. A nice chain of events would be our next card, Elite Vanguard, followed up by turn two, uh, Divine oh Favor, in the deck. That's 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 not too bad. That's a 3-4. Really? I, I think Elite Vanguard is going to be awesome with Armored Warhorse in a white mini deck with another card that's coming up later on. Cool. Stop spoiling it ahead, Joe. I haven't. I keep saying there's another card that goes well with this. I like I like these 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 two cards plus another one. It's, it's nice. It's got yeah. a lot of aggression in there. So, uh, out of Elite Vanguard comes our first Planeswalker. It's good old uh, Mr. Jura. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> same, ab same abilities as, as before. We don't, we don't need to discuss how good Gideon is. Uh, he'll, st he'll still oh, be doing... I, I thought he was terrible. What? <laughs> he'll still be doing his thing. He'll still be racking up a reasonable price tag for himself. Um, really? I saw on um, Channel Fireball the other day, he's only $10 because he's going to be printed so much now. Yeah, I guess now there's oh, two of yeah. them, and then the price will go down. Yeah, no, yeah. that's a good I'm pretty sure he's awesome. now $10, which is awesome. So I may buy some. Oh, <laughs> some. Some. Going into it. Um, and this, yeah. as as they did with uh, M11 of cards that are of Planeswalkers, but they've gone into it with a rare this time. So you now get Gideon's Avenger rare, three mana, two, two. Uh, whenever a creature and opponent controls become tapped, put a plus one plus one counter on Gideon's Avenger. That's very synergistic with Gideon as an entity. Mm hmm. This guy is going to go bonkers very quickly if you play him late. He's good late, he's good early, he's amazing. That, 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 that is a good way to sum up what if a, if a card is exceptionally good. Is if no matter what time you play it, it's going to have good value. It's going to be it's going to yeah. be good. Um, and this guy definitely has that. Yes, no, I agree. He's, uh, he's just he's nice, he's strong. He's got Gideon's whips. Oh. There's oh, another good. guy with Gideon's whips as well. Yeah, uh, maybe it's this Gideon's lawkeeper. The next card on our list. It is. Um, so yeah, they'll have Mythic Planeswalker, rare spin-off, common spin-off. I think is the uh, the way that goes. And then the the, the white one of Gideon is uh, a Blinding Mage s card for one less mana, but one less toughness. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think it's probably better than Blinding Mage. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Blinding Mage is in 
this set because of this. And uh, one thing I've realised with uh, with drafting the uh, new Phyrexian and stuff, that just no matter what epic bomb or threat they have, you can just <laughs> eliminate yeah. it with with this guy or with blinding. So one man, dude. Yeah, it's just it's so valuable. Having yeah. just to tap somebody down is just beyond me. So going going past that is uh, if you saw the Magic Show and uh, the M12 spoilers they had, this is Evan Irwin's exclusive spoiler that he had about a week ago, Grand Abolisher. Big this guy, this guy's good. It's insane. He's, uh, uh, he's good with the um, Angelic Blessing, is it, or whatever it's called? Angelic something? Yeah, an Angelic Destiny, because it allows yeah. you to resolve your... Destiny without it being destroyed, without your creature being sniped off. So allows you to resolve your anything. Yeah, it's true, just, it's true. Good, good value, good value. But uh, you know, in the draft, they work well together. I think it'll be one of those cards that are, that will be good in draft, but I think it will be the best in in proper constructed. Like surgical extraction is uh, a very good card in, uh, well, should be a very good card in uh, in in constructed play, but. You know, you don't first pick it in in, in a draft ever because it's not really going to do anything. And I think this guy will shine more outside of outside of limited, to be honest. I, I personally, well, it depends on the pack, but I would be tempted to take this guy first pick. He's still pretty good, regardless. He well, I'd, take, down a lot I'd, of I'd take it for first pick for for the tickets, but um, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll we'll have to wait and see see that happens when when M12 comes out on uh, online, which. Yeah, online. Unfortunately, we won't be together to do that. We'll have to be doing them separately. Oh, well. Shame. Shame. <laughs> Doesn't want my input, apparently. What's that? What? <laughs> what? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just move on. Griffin Rider. <laughs> um, this guy. I don't really like this that much. There are a few Griffins, fair enough. But, mm, um, quite a few. It's like Champions. It's, no, it's, what, that's it what seems like Oryx Sun Chaser to me. Yeah, Oryx and Sanchez, Champions Drake. 1-1 one, one Flyers for two. Well, Oryx Sanchez doesn't even get flying unless you, you have its requirement. Yeah, it is very Champions Drake-esque. Yeah. The Cha true. Champions Drake has flying at least, though, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah, but I think it's more mana. I think it's three. I don't know. It yeah. might be two. I'm pretty sure it's just two. I think it's a, a, a very great. So the, the reason that this card, you can tell, it's not going to be some epic, as in, whoa, plus two, plus two flying, it's because it's just common. Um... Mm. You're just, you're just looking at it and seeing the ability, seeing his cost and his power and stuff, and they go, oh, it's common. That can't be very good. So, yeah, unimpressed by that guy. Uh, continuing with Griffins is uh, Griffin Sentinel. He was, I, think, I think he missed M11, was in M10. Um, yeah, he was. Re reasonable guy, reasonable guy. Uh, would be happy to, to what, sixth, seventh pick this in, uh, in, in, in the appropriate deck. Yeah, he's not, he's not going to see much, well... He's not going to be a first pick. Well, definitely not first pick, but he's not going to be a very high pick. No, but he's no. nice. Yeah. Um, it's just the fact that flying written on him, because flying is just so OP in uh, in draft. Yeah. Just evasion in general, but definitely, uh, that's definitely a card you'd, you'd like. You definitely wouldn't go. Oh, shall I play it? Shall I play it? No, but yeah, you'd want to put him in. Right now, this Guardians pledge. This caused me uh, a lot of dismay when I read this. I thought, okay, three mana. Boy creatures get plus two, plus two. I thought this was an honour of the pure replacement for one extra mana that you get plus two, plus two. I thought that was just insane. But then <laughs> <laughs> it's just an instant. And I'm going, oh, it's boring. What's, the, what's that one that yeah. gives plus two, plus inspired two? Charge. Mighty leap. Think, you mean? Oh. Yeah, it's, oh, right. it's, in, it's, in, it's inspired charge, but uh, for one less than for, for only white. And I was like, oh, okay. That was underwhelming. That was a low blow. And then you look at the next card. Is actually just honor of the pure. But I'm pretty sure this is his third, uh, his third session of being in in corsets. M10, M11, and then M12. So what an honor of the pure. I don't remember. Oh, did it miss M11? I don't know. I can't remember. I thought it wasn't, but it may be. Well, no, no, that that would make sense then if it wasn't in uh, in M11. Yeah, because there's very few cards that have been in all three so far. Yeah. But, uh, did some research into that, that one. one. Lifelink, again, uh, pretty pretty standard. There's lead, needs no explanation with that. Boring. Indeed, boring. <laughs> yeah, boring. Right, Mason Chantress, yes, I think maybe 
he did a lot of cars that weren't in M11 and had come back with M12 because this wasn't in M11, surely. No, it wasn't. It yeah. was M10, yeah. But Actually, yeah. Sorry, just going back to Honor of the Pure, that was the card I was saying it would be very good in a white beanie deck with oh. uh, old Elite Vanguard and Horseman. Indeed, I think... Uh, yeah, it's pretty good with the white cards, good. that Honor of the Pure. <laughs> yeah, it works really well. It also works well with blue cards. What's the difference between Mesa Enchantress and Core Spirit Dancer? Uh, Core Spirit Dancer gets powered up by the enchantments it has on it as well. Yeah, and what, what, how much does Core Spirit Dancer cost to play? Two, but it's an, it also it, it only draws cards and auras, I think, whereas this is on enchantments as well. Oh, right, so there, there is a difference, because I really don't uh, like it when they just make cards that are strictly worse than other ones. Obviously, the thingy will go out because of Eldrazi, but... Um, okay, this one's just enchantment, so yeah, there's a little bit of, uh, of balance with that there. Still, yeah. that that being rare is beyond me. How Why doesn't go? it have any power? I don't know. It's just, okay, I'm going to cost three mana, and when you play an enchantment, which is never, then I'll draw you a card. Yeah, I think the intention is you're supposed to enchant her, but it doesn't really work out, so... The only, the only like, aggressive, competitive uh, in enchantments is one of the ones that's a couple down the thing, and you don't really want to play that on her. But the next Mighty Leap uh, standard sort of thing, that's always going to be there. Moving on. White Giant Growth. Indeed. So Oblivion Ring is, uh, is back, and now it's uncommon again. Um, when was it not? Was it, was it a common at one point? It was common in shards, in ah. in the Law Wind Shadow more esque block where it was original, where it was back then. I'm pretty sure it was uncommon then as well. Cool. But I, I made, I, yeah, but yeah, nice to see Oblivion Ring back because it's just insane. It's like the best way to deal with planeswalkers. So it's the best way to deal with mo most things. To be honest, it's yes. good, good. most non land permanents. <laughs> All non-land permanents, let's get them all. Except for obviously the ones with stupid lame proof. The guy's uh, head is just getting completely wrecked as well by that seal. <laughs> poor dude. He's like, ah, my face. Speaking of another poor dude, this good old Grark is still here, feeling warm and fuzzy. With, uh, <laughs> with pacifism. He's been feeling that for a while now. Yeah, I think he's getting pretty bored. He'd like to go and kill somebody probably or be demonic. Pacifism is like the, uh, the the cheap man's oblivion, the oblivion ring. Sorry, um, why you'd want to play one over the other, but you you just need it in there for core sets. It will uh, you probably get a couple in the deck builders toolkit as usual. It's just uh, just a good thing to have. Yeah. Another Griffin, another Griffin coming up in uh, Peregrine Griffin, five mana, two four flying first strike. No need in explaining like, stuff. Up there. They're all words we know. They're all words we like don't really understand the bonuses of having first strike on a dude that has large toughness. Doesn't, mm, seem, doesn't seem right. It's, uh, um, the, the advantage you can see oh, clearly is that he doesn't die to either of the Lightning Bolt-esque cards um, by having large toughness, but in combat, first strike is supposed to overrule the fact that you yeah. guys got any toughness because you're supposed to hit them before they're a chance to get you, but having four toughness is I'm pretty sure just to protect against incinerate. As far as I can yeah, you're right. This guy, this guy's quite confusing. Yeah. None uh, of the uh, not, other flyers not. have two or less toughness, do they? Which makes I it. I think a lot of them do. Maybe Stormfront Pegasus. No, there's there's, a, there's that there's a Drake there's uh the three one Is there? flying thing. Yeah, there's yeah. protection that can only block flyers type things like a bigger welkin turn. Hmm. But that's obviously in a different colour, which is not where we are now. We will discuss that one there. But again, I think this will go will be a nice turn five after you've played your assault griffin on turn four, uh, just to keep mm -hmm. just to keep command of the air. So that's fine. Oh, to be honest, this 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 is the kind of card I would first pick in a draft. Yeah, you know, he's he's he's, a, he's an absolutely amazing flyer, but he does over, a lot over, of over, over, over assault griffin. No, but what I mean is that it's it is first pickable material. If you're looking to go into white blue flyers, this is the best option. You'd take it, yeah. I'd take it if uh, I was in white blue flyers. I agree. say the last yeah. pack or something. I wouldn't take this I would over. Take the last pack, put myself in white blue flyers. I think it's probably one of the best ones in the white blue flyer bracket. 
just because of the fact that it can defend, it, it's it's defend against a lot of the removal, which is good. Yeah, no, it's 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 good. Yeah, but it's just uh, a little bit more expensive. I'd rather, put it this way: I'd rather the two-four first striker that beats all the other flyers than the three-two-one that gets beaten by this. So, I'd rather yeah. have the same costing angel that we'll see in a minute or so. So no, I'd rather. <laughs> Fair enough. I'd rather not have our next card here. Personal no. strength. What the hell? Prevent all <laughs> the, the, the picture is exactly what everyone's thinking. She's like, <laughs> what? She's like, what are you doing? What, what, what am I doing in my little circle? Of, uh, I can't do anything. All these silly cards like Mark of Asylum or whatever it is. Right, let's put our heads together. Two seconds here and try and think of a situation where this is good. Well, I don't know because it's damaged so it wouldn't like, stop like the cards, like black cards that lose you life as they're coming, because that's li life loss, not damage. It doesn't prevent that, mother, like, giving you a poison counter. Yeah, no. It's only if people that... decide to lightning bolt you on your turn. Yeah. That's so, an odd So you move. end your turn and then you lose. Instead of well, losing Unless there was, like, some sort of, um, like, red card where it was deal two damage to your opponent and deal two damage to you. What Maybe does that... Work there. This could kill me. What is Lust for War text? Is that deal damage or is that lose life? Um, I'm pretty sure it's one of the because it's red. I it's called Lust for War! I think it's deals three damage. No, it must be lose life otherwise you could redirect it to the Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you haven't done that in the past so I assume you, it's not. No, you, it, it is damage because I, I have done that before. Oh, uh, well, we'll, 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 never mind. Moving on. Um, Next card after that, Pride Guardian, Cat Monk. No three for one. Mm -hmm. Gaining some life. Uh this guy is pretty much just fog. Gain three life. I don't yeah. think he's ever really gonna be a Yeah. But but I don't think he's ever gonna be around again post him blocking to be able to block again. So he's um he's also a worse version of Gravity. Fender in like Zendikar or something. Well, like yeah, Perth, Perth. I think, yeah well, he's just worse than that, infinitely worse. So, just having having a Nort four on turn one, albeit though it can never attack. Um, that's 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 pretty big. That's going to hold off a lot of things. If you're on the play and play that, and they're like, oh, I've got Goblin Guide, I'm going to lose. <laughs> True, but um, all of Vines was similar to this in N11. That didn't see much play, so. So, uh, we got Rock Egg next. I like, I like Rock Egg. Rock Egg's just cool. Uh, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to gain you some life with uh, with blocking. It's going to uh, then hopefully give you a, a win condition, which is, which is pretty nice. Three, three flyers are good, especially if they're, uh, you didn't have to pay. They're the appropriate yeah, mana. Yeah, it's extortionate mana cost. That's cool. He was good in M11. He was good in M12, I guess. He's a he's a carry through. He is. Here's another card that's been been through the ages. Sarah Angel. Good old Sarah Angel. <laughs> uh, has it got new flavor text this time? I can't it does. Know. Yes. One of them was her sword sings louder than something along the other. Any him or something like that. That's all. Yeah, that was it. This Don't one's more good. With what? Oh, the flavor text. I thought you meant this version. Yeah, no. <laughs> this this card is still good. Like Tom still plays this in his uh, in his blue white control deck. Has like a sort of we can't afford to just fill all the decks with Brainslayer type things, and he still plays it. And you're like, oh, I need to come up with an answer to that because that's going to kick my ass. It still just flies yeah, off. Well, it was a rare originally. I mean, yeah. it, it must have, it was good at some play point. Play Sarah Angel. Play Armageddon. Oh. Win the game. <laughs> no, that's that's pretty game over. Um, again, vanilla dude next time. Look at the mana cost of this. Like five mana, yeah, albeit it's three and double white for Sir Angel. This guy is only single white, but just a three five elephant. I, 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 I like this guy. I like him. Uh... He's better than I saw in blue in like M11. There was that sort of crab. Oh, the anchor for two five. I think that guy yeah. is so below par, it's uh, um, Yeah, no, he, I think he's good for like, you can pick him up quite late and he fits nicely into if you're doing, if you don't get the flyers in white-blue, 
you can go and go for that sort of white blue control kind of deck that has like one big bomb and then you just hold out till then and he works quite well in that and he beats quite well as well because there's very few cards that beat his toughness yeah yeah five 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 toughness and limited is nice it's like uh like the only cards that can kill it things like the turn to slag it in in scars block um like if you're not playing against red then you're probably going to be alright like grasp of darkness obviously before things like dismember as well but get anything even more than that and then you're going to be safe for a while uh next card on our list spirit mantle uh this card this card's not bad i don't dislike this at all this is very interesting i hadn't seen this one yet i was keeping up to date but i didn't know this one slipped through my radar so it's a uh, it's an aura two mana uh enchant creature gets plus one plus one protection from creatures which is uh it's just which is very very weird uh, but i think that that basically means well obviously it means that it's unblockable um but that, that's yeah. just that's just a nice thing to have making something unblockable with like, something like whisper silk cloak can then um have drawbacks of well okay i can't giant growth it i can't then equip it with something else but this gives you the same evasion but with that added bonus of uh of still being able to uh do stuff with it but yeah. obviously you can still yeah obviously you can still die it can still be lightning bolt it can still be removed but uh no i like that it's cool and pingers though which is nice and there are some nice ones in red this time around so yeah uh, i think the picture's awesome as well yeah. i yeah. first pick it for the picture yeah yeah the picture's <laughs> just uh however something it's, uh, it's wouldn't a pick it for the picture that, no, I wouldn't first pick this next one for the picture, but these stave off. It's just terrible, terrible, terrible art. But it's a classic white protection thing. It's a very emergent skate, very Apostle's Blessing. I think Apostle's Blessing is probably the best one out of that little recent yeah, blast. You can do yeah, the yeah. as well, can't you? Yeah, and there's this. Yeah. Um, so, uh, next one Stonehorn Dignitary. Uh, this, that's just weird. That's just a weird, weird ability. There's a lot of this weirdness in m12 with this sundial of the infinite which we'll cover later um what was that uh abolish something the guy you can't do anything in your opponent's turn type thing this is this is just seems very odd i see the best play with this is yeah they play putrefax you flash this in and then you, they're just like oh <laughs> what's <laughs> true how are you going to flash it in up? I don't tell people we're flashing it in. In Australia, it's Lay supposed low. to be... No, because yeah. that doesn't work, I don't think. Never mind. <laughs> Stormfront Pegasus, very, very normal. Uh, the, a good turn two in that white-blue flies deck, which we keep building. And then the first of our Titan reprints. Ooh. Sun Titan. Ooh. Very nice. Good old. I thought it was a bird. I thought it was a... Titan. But <laughs> apparently it's the bloke. Yeah, it's a joke. Uh, it's a bloke. Yeah. I thought it was a woman. It's a bloke. That's a guy. Yeah, it, after looking at it closely, then it is. Now, this next card, Timely Reinforcements, I like this. Really? Less than, yeah, if you have less life, then you gain six. If you have fewer creatures, you get three soldiers. It's pretty easy to be less life than your opponent and mm. to have less creatures. And then three yeah, mana, that's a huge swing. It, it fails the test. It fails the test. Is this card good in the late game when you have like a sort of stalemate? No, because you'll probably have roughly the same creatures, yeah, and no, you just I, need like a different card. This is cool. This is back to the what would would you first pick this to go into the deck? I think this is cool. I like this. It's like it's like mind culling. I think it just reminds me of that. <laughs> mind culling is infinitely better though. Mind culling is good. It's good. So that wraps up our white cards there. Um, uh, blue cards is the next on the list now. So Woo! I, th I think Joe likes blue. So we'll let him lead yeah, the way uh, on, 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 on blue. Over to you, Joe. <laughs> 